Are you ready to explore God's wild and wonderful world? Welcome to the Nat Theo podcast. I'm your host, Erin Lynham. I'm a certified master naturalist, Bible teacher, and author. And I am so excited to dive into God's written word, the Bible, and his created world with you. We are all looking for adventure. Have you ever been outside at dusk when the sun is setting and shadows are getting longer as night is coming? And you look up into the sky and you notice creatures flying around. Maybe at first you think they're birds, but as you watch them, you notice that they are different from birds. These are not birds at all. They are bats. I am so excited to dive into the fascinating world of bats with you. Bats are incredibly diverse. Do you know what diverse means? Diverse means having a lot of differences and variety. And this is definitely true for bats. You see, there are bats that are as small as bumblebees. That's the case with the rightly named bumblebee bat. And there are bats that are as large as or even larger than hawks. There are bats that eat sweet nectar from flowers and bats that lick blood from other animals. There are bats that live in caves and bats that make homes inside of bamboo stalks. You see, God made bats in so many different ways. There are over 1,300 kinds of bats in the world, and they're very different from one another. Wait, what was that number I just said? Do you remember? 1,300. There are 1,300 different kinds of bats. Can you write that number, 1,300? Can you picture it in your mind? If I were to write the number 1,300, I would write a 1, comma, 3, 0, 0. That is 1,300. Having our numbers right is important in nature study. And CTC math is what our family uses to help us make sure our numbers are right. The CTC math program recently helped my son master the math skill of place values, like knowing that one comma three zero zero is 1,300. Try CTC math's simple and effective approach to math lessons for free for one week at ctcmath.com. All right, listeners, here is our trail map for today. We are going to learn what exactly is a bat. Why do bats hang upside down? Are bats blind? What is echolocation? And how can we send out signals to hear from God? Standing here at the trail map, what is the most important thing to take on every adventure? I hope you know the answer by now if you've been listening to Nat Theo for a while. The most important thing we can bring on every adventure is God's word, the Bible. So let's start with a verse of the day. Deuteronomy 4.29 says, But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Today we will learn how when we seek God and call out to him, he answers us. Listen to this beautiful song inspired by Deuteronomy 4.29 by Scripture Lullabies. You can enjoy all of their powerfully peaceful music inspired by scripture on every streaming platform or at the link in today's show notes. I will seek you, Lord. Search with all my heart till I find you. Waiting patiently. All right, before we get going, here is our trivia question. How many years does a bat live for? Do you think you know? Take a guess as to how many years a bat might live, and we will find out at the end of today's lesson. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is a bat? 
A bat might look and act like a bird in some ways, but bats are very different from birds in other ways. We have learned that in nature, things are not always what they seem. We saw this on episode 7 when we studied roly-polies, and we learned this on our last episode, 37, looking at spiders and seeing that they are not insects or bugs. The same is true for bats. This is why it's so important when we study God's creation to really learn what something is and what something isn't. So what do you think a bat is? Do you have any ideas? A bat is a mammal, but what exactly is a mammal? A mammal is an animal, but not every animal is a mammal. Did you catch that? Let me say it again. A mammal is an animal, but not every animal is a mammal. The following things are true of almost every mammal. First, mammals have hair or fur. Second, mammals are warm-blooded, meaning their bodies can regulate or change temperature by a little bit to stay at a consistently warm temperature. Us humans, we are also warm-blooded. Third, mammals are vertebrates, meaning they have a backbone. Fourth, almost all mammals have live births instead of laying eggs. And fifth, mama mammals feed their babies with milk from their own bodies. Let's see if we can come up with a trick to remember these characteristics of mammals. See if you can remember these words. Furry, warm, backbone, live birth, milk. Say it with me. Furry, warm, backbone, live birth, milk. Furry, warm, backbone, live birth, milk. These things are true of almost every mammal, and they are true of bats. You see, bats have fur on their body and heads, although not on their wings. Bats are warm-blooded, and they do have a backbone. Bats give birth to a live baby. They do not lay eggs like birds. And finally, bats feed their baby with milk from their own body. So can you think of a main way that bats are different from birds? I'm going to play some music and give you a minute to think about it and share your answers. How are bats different from birds? A couple of main ways that bats are different from birds are that birds lay eggs while bats have a live baby. And birds feed their chicks with insects or seeds while bats feed their babies with milk from their own bodies. Now, people often confuse bats for birds because bats fly. And this is truly unique and special when it comes to mammals. In fact, bats are the only mammals that can fly. Do you remember when we began that I told you that there are over 1,300 or 1,300 kinds of bats and that they are very different from one another? Because of this, bats have their own family in the animal world. It is called Chiroptera. Chiroptera is the order or the collection of mammals that are bats. Chiroptera means hand wing, which is quite fitting because a bat's wings are actually its hands. The bones inside their wings, they look very different than bird bones. The ones in the bat's wings are actually very long fingers. You can see an image of this in the Nat Theo Club lesson guide. And if you would like access to those Nat Theo Club lesson guides, you can join the Nat Theo Club at erinlinum.com slash club or at the link in today's show notes. So we understand now what a bat is. And when you think about a bat, how do you picture it in your mind? Is it hanging upside down? We often think about bats hanging upside down, but why exactly do they hang upside down? 
One reason is that bats cannot take off from the ground into flight like the way that birds do. Instead, a bat will climb high up into a tree or on a building and hang upside down and then take off, really just let go and take off to fly from that position. On episode 20, we learned how birds fly, and we discovered that birds use something called lift to capture air beneath their wings and really push them up higher into the air. Bats don't do this as well as birds do. Instead, they drop down into the air from that hanging position and spread out their wings to catch the air, kind of like a parachute or a glider. Hanging upside down from high places also helps keep bats safe from predators like large prey-eating birds that might want to eat them for lunch. The cool thing is that God designed bats to hang comfortably upside down, just like the sloths that we learned about on episode 32. When a bat hangs upside down, it has special muscles that lock its toes and talons into place so that the bat can actually relax and sleep while hanging instead of using energy to grip the branch or whatever they're hanging from. Now, to me, hanging upside down doesn't sound very comfortable, but this is how God designed bats. I have a picture of a bat we found hanging upside down from our lilac bush. You can see that photo in the Nat Theo Club lesson guide or at the link in the show notes. Have you ever heard anyone say something or someone is blind as a bat? This is a common phrase that a lot of people have used, but it's not very true. Bats are not blind. In fact, they actually have good eyesight, especially when it comes to seeing in low lighting, like at dusk. You see, most bats are nocturnal. Have you ever heard that word? Nocturnal means active at night. If a creature is nocturnal, it usually means they sleep during the daylight hours and then are awake at nighttime and do their hunting or foraging when it is dark. Bats see a bit differently than us humans do. They don't see things as sharply or with as much detail as we do, but they don't need to. Instead, their eyes are especially designed for seeing in the dark. You know, this is one example of why it's important to seek truth or what really is. You might hear someone say blind as a bat and then think that bats are blind. But as naturalists or those studying what God has made in nature, it's important that we always look for the truth. And in this case, the truth is that God designed bats to see just as they need to. So, bats do see well with their eyes, but they also have another way of knowing what is around them. Do you know what that might be? How else might bats find their food in the dark? Many bats have a special way to find food in the dark, and it's called echolocation. Echolocation is when a bat sends out a chirping sound into the dark. Us humans can't even hear this chirping sound because it's too high-pitched for our ears to pick up. However, there are special bat detector tools that can be used to hear the sound. Maybe add that to your birthday or Christmas list. When a bat sends out a chirping sound, that sound bounces off the objects or the surfaces around them, and it sends back an echoing sound. Have you ever yelled in an empty room? and you hear your own voice echo back, that is what the bats are doing. But in this case, their sound doesn't just bounce off of empty walls. It bounces off of insects, like moths, that they can eat for dinner. God designed echolocation so carefully that bats can learn many things about the insects by the echo that they hear. By listening to the echo of their chirp, they can learn where the insect is, what shape the insect is, and what direction the insect is flying in. All this information helps the bat to catch its prey. 
You know, just like bats send out signals and receive back information, we can do something similar to receive information from God. Sometimes we might need wisdom, like to know what to do in a certain situation or what decision to make. Or we might need comfort, like if we are sad or going through a hard time. And we need to be reminded that God is always with us. Think about the bat sending out its chirping sound. When a bat does that, it hears back its own voice. But when we send out a signal through prayer, we don't hear our own voice come back. Instead, we can hear the voice of our Creator, God. In Jeremiah 33, 3, God said this to his children, Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Now, do you think this means we actually hear God's voice in our ears out loud? Not necessarily. There are stories in the Bible of times when God actually spoke out loud to people. And it doesn't happen too often now, but God does still sometimes talk to people out loud. He is very capable of that. However, most of the time, God's way of talking to us is in our spirits or in the deepest part of who we are. Because when we choose to follow Jesus as our Savior, God's own Spirit, His Holy Spirit is inside of us, and God speaks to us through His Holy Spirit. It might be hard to imagine what this is like, but I want to encourage you that the more you pray and read God's Word and learn about Him, the more you will hear from God. So don't be discouraged if you don't exactly know what I'm talking about or what this can look like yet. I have had times in my life where I really needed to hear from God. My husband and I have made big decisions for our family, and we wanted and needed God's guidance and his wisdom as we made those decisions. And God spoke to us in our spirits, or he brought guidance from other people who follow God. Or he directed us to a passage of scripture or a verse that helped us make our decision well. Now, this doesn't mean we always hear back right away from God. Sometimes he wants to grow our faith as we wait on his answers. 1 Peter 3.12 says, The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. Listener, God is listening to your prayers. 1 John 5, 14 to 15 says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Now, listener, listen carefully. This does not mean that God gives us everything that we want. You see, God knows what is best for us, and he wants what is best for us. But this is a very powerful verse. It means that as we seek God, he changes what we want. As our faith grows, we want what God wants. And then he can easily answer our prayers by saying yes, because we are asking for something that he already wants for us. How can you do that? Do you have any ideas? One powerful way is to use the Bible when you pray. Pray through scripture. Take a verse and pray it to God, asking him to help you understand the verse and using the verse or passage to guide your prayer. I really love doing this with Psalm 1 and Psalm 23. Think about the bats in the dark trying to find food. If they never sent out a signal, they wouldn't know where the food was. They wouldn't receive any information. In a similar way, if we never pray, it's hard for us to know what God wants or to hear from him. This week, practice praying to God in your mind and out loud and with a verse or a passage from the Bible. Do you remember our trivia question? How many years does a bat live for? Most bats live around 10 to 20 years. 
but there are at least six species of bats that can live over 30 years. A bat's lifespan, or how long most bats live, is very rare when it comes to mammals. You see, most mammals the same size of bats have very short lifespans. They might live a few years or even one or less years. So bats are very special in this way. God designed them and gave them what they need to live long lives. Make sure you tune into the next episode as we dive even deeper into a bat cave. We'll learn how bats live and work together, how bats have babies, what important jobs God gave bats to do, why bats are disappearing, and how we can help protect these amazing creatures. Now it's your turn to explore. With an adult or permission, go outside at dusk when the sun is setting. Lay on the ground in a safe spot and watch the sky to see if you can spot any bats flying around above you. If you have a hard time seeing bats around your home, you could try looking in wooded areas or under bridges or by rocky cliffs or by old buildings. Thank you so much for listening to episode one of Bats. And again, we'll dive even deeper into their fascinating ways on our next episode. If you enjoyed this lesson, please take a moment to share it with a friend and subscribe, rate, and review Nat Theo wherever you listen. Get out there and keep exploring God's wild and wonderful world. Bye.